welcome back everyone in previous lectures in this course we have seen how to obtain the response of a single degree of freedom system subject to either free vibration or harmonic excitation and we did that for damped and undamped system but in reality there would be several there are several other type of loading which may not be described using harmonic loading and the example could be step loading pulse for pulse loading and other type of forces so what we are going to start today is basically how to obtain response of a single degree of freedom system subject to arbitrary excitation okay so let us get started today we are going to start a new chapter okay uh, which is basically the non periodic excitation to single degree of freedom system okay so right now we would only be focusing on single degree of freedom system now if you recall from previous chapters till now let us see what we have done we set up the equation of motion for a single degree of freedom system which we said the equation of motion for a linear system it was something like this okay and this is equal to p of t okay and depending upon p of t which is like you know referred to as the excitation or the forcing function we divided our study in free vibration and forced vibration and in free vibration we first study undamped free vibration and then damped free vibration okay now in the forced vibration we studied the harmonic excitation or the periodic excitation okay so till now we have finished up to this part here now harmonic and periodic excitations are fine but you will encounter many loads in a real life scenario which might not be either harmonic or periodic okay so for those type of system it becomes imperative that we study these type of system okay so response to subject to non periodic excitation okay and then later of course we will study this but today's chapter is focused on non periodic excitation okay which is another common set of uh, a loading that are encountered in real life and for which the approach to find out the analytical solution is little bit different than what we have studied so far for harmonic excitation okay so again for this case our problem statement is okay problem statement is basically mu dot plus cu dot plus ku is equal to pt okay and the initial conditions okay are given to us let us first take this as zero initial conditions okay so this is our problem statement and here the pt the forcing function is neither harmonic neither pure periodic okay it's some arbitrary variation okay so if you consider let me just say any arbitrary variation of pt with respect to time let me just draw it like this okay and then i need to find out the solution or the response of this single degree of freedom system subject to this okay so let us see how do we do that okay now for this type of functions pt what actually we do in order to find out the response we divide this function in very small intervals okay so throughout the uh, loading we divide it in very small interval okay and then at any time t let us say this is at any time t we try to find out the response ut subject to all these small durations loading okay up to the time t okay so what do we do let us say i want to find out the response at any time ut okay so i have the excitation function 
and I divide it in small intervals like this. Okay, the response at time t ut okay would have contribution from each of these. Okay, so let us say this, this, and this. Each of this small duration loading up to this point. Okay. All right. So this is the strategy that we are going to employ. Okay, and let us see how that works out. But before we get into that, we are going to introduce a new concept, okay, which is called impulse. Okay, and we are going to talk about unit impulse, okay, response to unit impulse. Okay, and uh, I'll show you why do we do that. Okay, now. An impulse, basically it is defined as a force, okay, so impulse is a very large force, okay, that acts for a very small duration, okay, that acts for a very small duration, okay, such that the area under, okay, the area under the force and the duration is still some finite value. Okay, so basically the force that acts for a very small time and very large magnitude is characterized as impulse such that it still has finite area under the force time diagram. Okay, so let us say, let me draw an impulse like that. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to write PT here, okay, and this is my time axis T. So I'm going to consider a force which is at time tau, okay, at any time tau, okay, and basically this duration here, okay, let me call it epsilon, okay, and this magnitude, basically this force, is actually, I will call it 1 by epsilon. So what happens, as epsilon goes to 0, okay, the p tau is actually goes to infinity. Okay, however, even in that case, my p tau times d tau over the duration, okay, over the duration, tau to tau plus epsilon would still be equal to 1. Okay, and that I can see it from here. If I multiply basically 1 by epsilon with epsilon, I still get a unit area. Okay, so this is one way to define a unit impulse. Okay, so we said that the time integral is still a finite value even though the force goes to a very large value for a very small duration of time okay so this is the definition of impulse okay now mathematically this kind of uh, functions can be uh, represented using something called delta okay dirac delta function okay so let me just write it it's called dirac delta function Okay, and if you have come across this function previously, this basically says that delta x is equal to 1 for the, when its argument of this function is actually equal to 0. Okay, and it is 0 everywhere else. Okay, it is 0 at all other places for x not equal to 0. Okay, now if I have to do this for this function, what I do? I represent this Dirac delta as this t minus tau. Okay, so that this function is actually equal to 1 when t equal to tau. Okay, so when t equal to tau, this argument again becomes 0. Okay, same thing that we did here. Okay, and this is 0 for t not equal to tau. Okay, so this is mathematically how we represent the uh, unit impulse. Okay. Now, according to the Newton's second law of motion, okay, if we have a force P, 
right? If we have a force P that acts on the body, okay, the rate of change of momentum of that body is basically equal to the applied force. Okay, so basically, let me utilize the Newton's second law. Okay, the Newton's second law says that T by dt of momentum, and as you know, momentum is defined as mass times velocity that should be equal to the applied force okay and if mass is constant i can write this as m dut that should be equal to p okay now we can go ahead and integrate both side of equation so that we can get it as p okay we can write this as P of dt integrated over time t1 to t2. Okay, let us say it goes from state 1 to state 2. Then I can write this as m du times, okay, state 1 to state 2. And let us say that uh, it went from velocity v1 to, okay, v2 or let us say it went from u1 dot to u2 dot okay so that i can write this as m okay u2 dot minus u1 dot okay which is nothing but m delta u dot okay so basically this term here that you see this is the time integral of force right what we define as impulse okay and as you can see from this expression impulse is basically the change in the momentum okay so if you apply an impulse of any body that is basically it is equal to change in the momentum of that body okay so let us say if you consider a single degree of freedom system that we have been dealing till now again the same representation okay we have a single degree of freedom system here okay and i apply an impulse on it okay so what's going to happen okay if somehow i can calculate the magnitude of impulse okay that would lead to the change in momentum okay and let us say this is an unit impulse so that okay this is a unit impulse so that i have uh, uh, let let me just go back to that uh, the impulse is basically applied at time t equal to tau. Okay, so I will draw that figure again here. Okay, this is at any time tau. Okay, the force pt. Okay, so the impulse is at that time tau. This is a unit impulse, which basically means that my p tau, which we have derived p tau times d tau is equal to one over the time duration okay so when we have this system here the spring mass damper system and we apply a unit impulse at time t equal to tau what will happen it would lead to change in momentum okay so let us say this unit impulse okay p tau times t tau which is equal to one and if initially I'm assuming that the system was at rest, okay, after the time t, the velocity at time tau would be equal to, okay, m times u of tau. Okay, I'm assuming that there was no initial velocity. Okay, so that tells me that u of tau is actually equal to 1 divided by m okay so if we apply an impulse to a system it gives rise to it leads to change in momentum which further gives some initial velocity to the system however it does not lead to any initial deformation okay because the spring as we discussed impulse is applied for a very short duration so the spring does not get time to actually react to that uh, high uh, magnitude small duration force so what happens okay so let me this is velocity actually don't mistake that so initial displacement is still equal to zero okay so with these conditions 
okay what we want to do we want to find out the response of this system okay the response of this spring mass damper system with these initial condition and that would be the response to a unit impulse at any time equal to tau okay so let us see what do we get uh, if you remember okay your expression for response to an undamped system remember it is now like a situation in which the initial conditions have been given to you and you have to find out what is the further motion so it works like when you apply an impulse it provides initial condition and then it is like a free vibration so after this these initial conditions are applied it would undergo basically free vibration okay and if you remember the equation of motion for free vibration for an undamped system it is first to undamped system we'll again do the damped system it was u of zero okay cos omega nt plus u dot of zero okay times sin omega nt and there was this omega n term here okay there is one small difference though here it was due to initial condition at time t equal to zero however for us the initial condition is at time t equal to tau okay so for our case basically the expression will become u of tau okay cos remember our motion is starting at t equal to tau okay and there is no impulse or the, there is no any force before t equal to tau okay so i'm going to shift my axis so that it becomes omega t minus tau plus u dot zero omega n sin omega n t minus tau because our impulse is applied for at t equal to tau and this solution is only valid for time that are greater than tau because if time is smaller than tau the response is actually equal to zero now we already know that this is equal to zero so we are only left with this term here okay uh, one correction this should be here actually, u dot of tau okay so we'll substitute the value of u dot of tau which is 1 by m omega n and this is sine omega n t minus tau okay and this function can also be written as a function of h of t minus tau okay so this is for undamped system similarly you can write the equation for free vibration of a damped system and similarly get the expression as u of tau is equal to m omega n e to the power minus zeta omega n t minus tau okay sine omega d sorry it should be here omega d here okay t minus tau again this we can write it as another function h t minus tau this is for a damped system okay this is for damped system so basically these h t minus tau are unit impulse response function okay these are basically response of a single degree of freedom system due to unit impulse so these are called unit impulse response functions okay all right so we have obtained basically the response due to unit impulse and remember this is response at any time t due to impulse at time t equal to tau okay so uh, let me write that again okay response at time t due to unit impulse at time t equal to tau okay now once we have that figured out okay we know that response due to 
unit impulse okay now we can delve into finding out the total response okay subject to the arbitrary excitation p of t which is varying arbitrary with time okay so once you knew, uh, know the h of t minus tau which is the unit impulse response function remember this is the response due to unit impulse so if you want to find out okay if you let us say if you want to find out response due to any impulse that is non unit okay so let us say response due to impulse i equal to let us say some other function p tau times d tau okay so how do we do that or let me just don't use the integration sign here let me just say that it is a very small value okay so that i can approximately say that the area is like p tau times t tau just like a rectangular area okay so response due to this impulse okay we can find that as response due to unit impulse times the magnitude of this impulse okay and this works for a linear system so if the system is linear we can employ this technique okay because for a linear i can directly multiply the response okay with this with the impulse magnitude to get the proportional response okay so if i have a response because remember when we said okay when we said that this is the variation all right when we said this is the variation of pt with respect to time and we said that the variation looks like something like any random or like an arbitrary function okay we have the function for unit impulse but for these cases these impulse small if i divide it in small time duration these impulses won't be unity all right so let us say this is at any time tau okay and this is the time d tau okay and then like you know this is the one two three so on okay so we want to find out for each of these strip like you know what is the response so that i can directly find out by multiplying with this function okay so multiplying h of t minus tau response due to unit impulse okay times the magnitude of the impulse okay so this is the response at any time t so let me instead of just saying that let me write it d of u t due to a small impulse but this is just one strip here right this is just due to this at any time t let us say here i want to find out okay time t so what do we do then well as we have previously discussed response at any time t would be the total response due to all the impulses okay up to the point or up to the time t okay so if we integrate this function from this time zero to t okay it would give me the total response at time t due to all the impulses okay and let us see how does that look like graphically so what i'm saying let me say i'm trying this graph here okay and then i'm drawing another graph here okay so let us say in the first case due to first impulse one it will undergo some free vibration okay okay for the second one it will start little bit at time uh, okay after d tau okay and again it will give me some unit uh, response okay which depends of course on the magnitude of that impulse these two impulses are not same okay it will again give me some response okay and it will keep on doing that okay let us say i draw at time d tau okay so at this point also i will have some response okay and if i keep adding them okay, okay all the point till i get to this point it will give me total response so this is 
let us say du1 du2 and so on this is basically du at any time t okay or tau let us say let us call this du of okay we'll call this du of t okay so the total response as you will you can imagine okay initially it would be only due to this function then it will keep on adding and the response will keep on adding up or subtracting depending upon whether they are in phase or out of phase okay so overall you will get some response you know random response okay which might look like something like you know i'm not trying accurately to like you know, reflect that uh, response function but it would look like something like this and this would be my total response okay so as i said i need to sum up response due to all the impulses okay so the function that i have basically was this okay it was p tau okay and then i had h of t minus tau d tau okay and i want to integrate this if i want to find out okay the u at any time t i want to integrate this dut up to time t equal to 0 to time t so p of tau t t minus tau d tau and this goes from 0 to t now remember here my variable is d tau okay so the variable here is tau not the time t t is basically up to the point till which i want to integrate okay so basically this impulse here that i had considered at any time tau that is my integration variable so if i vary this tau from 0 to t and sum up all the response to all the impulses i will get the final impulse so this expression here okay the expression that i have written here it is called okay let me again rewrite it okay, this expression p of tau h t of t minus tau d tau this is called convolution integral okay it's called convolution integral and like you know it finds a lot of application in like in a multidisciplinary field okay you will see at many places like you know this convolution integral now for our case okay for single degree of freedom system okay we already have the expressions h of t minus tau for damped and undamped system so we can substitute it here and we can get the expression for the ut due to any arbitrary varying force pt okay so that expression can be used to obtain the response and that expression let me just write it here ut let us first write for a damped system okay i can write this as m omega t 0 to t remember integration variable is tau okay i have this exponential term which is t minus tau okay and there is p tau term here as well okay so let me just do this let me first write here the p tau p tau e to the power minus zeta omega n t minus tau and this is sine omega d t minus tau d tau and i integrated from 0 to 2 to get the expression for all the analytical expression for this ut okay remember i am able to do that i am able to simply sum up all the function because i am assuming that all these functions are linear so my structure is linear what basically linear means let us say if my structure is linear elastic okay so the fs versus u is basically like this okay so the response i can directly sum up from the individual responses okay so this convolution integral are strictly for linear systems okay because we are using method of superposition okay we are using method of superposition okay so we have obtained this expression for damped system okay and if you put the value of zeta equal to zero 
okay you can get the expression for undamped system as well okay which is not very difficult again we will write it as p tau e to the power minus zeta omega n. well there won't be any zeta term here what i will just simply get sin omega n okay t minus tau d tau so this is for undamped system okay now one thing to note here would be in all these scenarios we had considered u0 or initially that system was at rest so at rest initial condition okay so when we said that my force is actually starting i just considered the effect of force assuming that the system was at rest but how about my system was already had some initial condition like it had some initial displacement from the position of equilibrium and it had some initial velocity okay if those values are non-zero okay so we had obtained the solution for at rest initial condition for non-zero okay for non-zero initial condition okay you need to find out the response due to initial condition like it's a free vibration okay you need to add the response that you get due to free vibration with initial condition of u0 and u dot 0 okay which is not very difficult we already have derived the expression for this from for uh, undamped uh, free vibration and damped free vibration okay so that needed to be if it's like you know had any kind of initial condition that needed to add up to this expression that we have derived here okay this is specialized form of uh, convolution integral that we use for uh, our case is called duhamel integral okay this is called so just giving you some terminologies here so that if when you see that you remember this is called duhamel's integral okay and it is just in a special like you know case of convolution integral okay now as you can imagine uh, basically what we are trying to do here okay for any arbitrary excitation which are not periodic or harmonic okay so we had obtained for periodic and harmonic loading okay the analytical expression for u of t but it is not so simple for any uh, arbitrary varying function okay so p tau if it's a very simple function then i can integrate this expression okay and obtain the solution for ut okay but if p tau is very complicated okay if it's very complicated then perhaps i won't be able to evaluate the integration okay analytically and then i'll have to go into numerical integration we will uh, which we will see in a uh, uh, like you know a uh, future chapter okay but instead of doing that there are better methods to calculate the response for the numerical response instead of just integrating the to have an integral okay so this was just to give you an idea that if there's any arbitrary non-periodic or non-harmonic function uh, loading x uh, function pt then how to get the response okay it might not always be the like you know best method to go about finding the solution of a, a response of a single degree of freedom system but it's like you know it's good to have a knowledge of this function okay all right once you understand the duhamel integral let us now go into some special cases of non-periodic loading okay and then we are going to see the calculate the response okay so what i would like to start with is step force okay a step force is typically defined as a force okay that you apply suddenly okay so it is like a step and then you maintain over time okay so let us say a load of amplitude p naught okay is applied suddenly and then it is maintained over time now in very first chapter we had already find the solution to this using the conventional uh, by solving the differential equation okay so basically 
if you consider an undamped system, we can go ahead and we can find out the solution to this using a uh, homogeneous uh, sort of complementary solution plus the particular solution. And we had seen that for an undamped system, we had obtained the UT was coming out to be P0 by K times 1 minus cos omega nt. Okay, this we had obtained using solving the differential equation. Okay, the same solution can also be obtained. Okay, just to demonstrate you, okay, the ap application of uh, Duhamel integral. Let us find the same solution using the Duhamel integral. Okay, so remember uh, for an undamped system, Duhamel integral say the response is basically 0 to t. Okay, P tau sine omega n t minus d tau. This is the expression. Now, the force is actually constant. Okay, so it doesn't matter what time you consider, P tau would always be equal to P naught. All right, so if you substitute it here and integrate this expression, okay. Say this is P naught sine omega n t minus t now. Remember, we are integrating with respect to integration variable tau. Okay, so this we can write it as let us take P naught outside. This would be minus cos omega n and then minus minus would get plus. So this would be basically t minus tau omega n 0 to t. And after you substitute the value, and remember, if I take omega n outside, m omega n square would be k. So this would be equal to p naught by k. If you substitute the vary uh, these limits of the uh, integration, I will get this as again one minus cos omega n t. Okay, so I mean in this case, you just happen to find out that this might be easier to do like that. However, for as the p tau or the loading function gets complicated, Duhamel integral tend to not be a good method to calculate the response. Okay, so in this case, what do you see? Response to a step function, okay, p naught by k, okay, we say that if this is the response like this, okay, p naught by k is nothing but the peak value of the static displacement okay so my dynamic displacement history is represented like this so this is nothing but basically equilibrium actually shifts from zero okay if i try to plot the response from zero it oscillates about ust naught which is basically p naught by k okay so let us say initially it was here okay as you apply this sudden load start oscillating about this load or this uh, static displacement okay this is how the response would look like okay so basically when you apply a step force okay what do you see the system start oscillating about its natural at its natural basically uh, frequency okay about a new equilibrium position which is the static displacement of the system okay due to the load p naught all right once you know that let us see what is the maximum value of this ut or basically the peak dynamic displacement now in this case as you can see this function is actually varying between cos omega nt between plus 1 and minus 1. Okay, so the maximum value would be when cos omega n is minus 1 or this I can say the maximum would be 2 times ust naught. Okay, that would occur when omega cos omega nt equal to minus 1. So, as we have seen, if you had a statically applied load p naught, okay, what would be the deformation? p naught by k. And that is what you have been studying till now before this dynamic course. Okay, however, 
if you apply this as a step force okay you get a dynamic displacement which is twice the static displacement so it depends how the load is actually being applied okay so if the load is applied suddenly like a step force then you get a displacement which is almost two times the static displacement okay and so this is for a undamped system we can uh, follow the same procedure for a damped system as well okay so for a damped system as well the response to uh, the step force can be calculated using the same expression you can use the duhamel if you like but you will see that duhamel integral becomes very complicated in this case okay and you can go ahead and perform that integration and have a look at it the integrand that you will have here is basically okay 0 to t remember p of tau would be p naught here okay so i'm just writing p naught times uh, e to the power minus zeta and t minus tau and then i have the second term here okay and if you go about integrating this function it gets a little bit tricky you know uh while you can still find it okay not okay. okay you will see that it might not be the best possible way to go about it so let me just write down the final solution for this okay okay this has expression for the response of a dam system okay to step force okay all right so this is what do you get okay and if you see again this is oscillating about this ust however the amplitude of the second term okay so this is now oscillates with that frequency omega d or time period td okay but with time because of this exponential term it starts to decrease so the amplitude starts to decrease so let us say uh this was the undamped system let us say this was the undamped system okay damped system what will happen depending upon the value of damping the response will start to decrease and go like this and if the damping is very high okay it will go to this one very quickly okay this is u of t here and this is time t okay so this is what happens now in this case you saw that utility of uh, Duhamel integral it uh, won't be that effective I mean in this case if you had this expression let us say to solve for a damped system okay if this is equal to p naught you might be just like it might just be easier to like you know find it uh, using the common method of uh, uh, basically uh, the sol solution of a differential equation okay so if you remember particular solution we write it as p naught by k here and complementary solution we write it as e to the power minus zeta omega nt a cos omega dt plus b sin omega dt okay so the total solution you can write it as p naught by k times e to the power minus zeta omega nt times a cos omega dt plus b sin omega dt and you can substitute the initial conditions which we have assumed at rest initial conditions if you substitute this you can get the values of this constant a and b and you will get the same expression okay and as i said the response looks like so this is undamped damping is equal to zero and these are the curves for let us say some intermediate value of damping zeta 1 or zeta 2 okay so this is what the response to a step function looks like okay and let us say if your goal okay is to apply a step force okay so that you minimize the vibration okay one of the uh, example would be like you know uh, you take a let us say you take a weight okay and you put it basically you basically put it on a any scale okay to measure this weight now you don't want too much of vibration because the reading would be fluctuating keep on fluctuating and if the damping is very small it would keep on fluctuating 
okay and it would give you correct rating so let us say if you want to weigh it in weighing machine what happens okay the way it is designed it is in a spring okay and this is like a step force right what is this step for this is like mg acting suddenly here okay so in this case you assign very high damping okay so that as soon as you uh, drop this weight on the top of this digital weighing machine okay it comes to rest very suddenly without any vibration to whatever the value mg that is being applied okay so it will converge to the value of mg okay all right so this was the response to a step force now we will delve into a different kind of force which is called basically a uh, ramp or linear uh, basically ramp force okay so let us now consider ramp loading okay now when we said that and that in this case remember we said that if you apply this load statically okay and if you apply this load as a step function the step function suddenly applied step function give you displacement which is twice the statically applied displacement okay now what do you mean when you say that you would apply it statically okay okay one way to define is basically you apply the load so slowly that it does not produce a lot of dynamic effect okay and to do that we basically apply ramp loading so basically a ramp loading looks like something like this okay so if this is the variation of pt versus t okay it linearly increases up to the value of load that you want to apply let us say this is p naught if you want to apply p naught now you are not applying it suddenly now remember in the previous case you applied it suddenly now you are not applying suddenly you are applying okay slowly or i won't call it slowly it depends on the rise time let us say this is defined as the rise time okay rise time is basically time taken to reach the amplitude of the force in a ramp loading that is we call it rise time okay so in this case basically we are applying something like this and depending upon the value of tr we will see later that our solution differs okay if tr is very small then it is almost like a step force okay if tr is very large then it is like you know constantly linearly increasing function okay now for this let us first find out response to lean sorry response to linearly increasing force so what i want to find out when the loading is still in this zone right here okay how does the response look like okay so if i apply so we will call this when it is still in the within still the linearly increasing force Linear increasing force. Remember, for this case, the PT I can write it as P naught T by TR. Okay, for T less than TR, and it is equal to P naught for T greater than TR. Okay, let us uh, put a equal sign here. Okay, so we want to find out when it is still in this uh, range, what is the response? Okay, and that is not very difficult to do. If I consider uh, undamped system this is the equation that i get for my equation of motion okay this is the differential equation that we get all right and we can go ahead and find the solution to this again you can uh, utilize uh, duhamel integral it won't be that difficult in this case okay or you can go using the conventional method now in this case let us go with the conventional method we know that particular solution i can use as okay p naught by k t by tr if you take this as a particular solution then this is one of the solution that satisfy this equation and complementary solution you know that it takes the form of for an undamped system okay we can write this as a cos omega nt plus p sin omega nt so my total solution becomes a cos omega nt plus p sin omega nt plus p naught by k t by tr and if you substitute the at rest initial condition u0 equal to 0 and u dot equal to 0 what you will see ut 
okay you can get the value of or the expression for ut as p naught pi k t by tr minus sin omega n t by omega n tr okay now if you look at let us just consider the linear part of the force here and then try to plot it okay this is my t the first part is nothing okay but the particular solution from here okay it is the particular solution from here and this is basically a linearly increasing function okay so the first part is basically p naught t by tr multiplied with a factor of 1 by k okay and this is basically ust okay remember what did we call when we say time variation of ust is when you consider a zero effect of mass in the system okay so you substitute mass equal to zero and whatever the uh, force basically you get pt divided by k okay that is basically your ust and that is what is it is here okay so remember pt was p naught t by tr okay so this is p naught t by tr okay so this is the force pt that is being applied okay and instead of force let me just write here the response u of t okay this is this line is my ust t and because if i am still considering in the linearly increasing zone it has still not reached the peak okay so there is no nothing like you know uh, it is still uh, increasing there is no peak value of ust yet okay and this is basically an oscillating function sin omega t okay when in when we sum this up these two function okay remember this function the second part is some looks like something like this okay and depending upon value of omega n and tr okay its amplitude would differ so the total response when you sum this kind of function and this kind of function okay it would look like something like this okay so basically the system start to oscillate again at its natural frequency omega n okay however about a about a about its static solution okay if there was no mass in the system no dynamic effect okay this is my u static and this is my total solution okay the difference is basically your this solution here so this is my u of t all right okay so we have seen that for the linearly increasing part this is how the response looks like and depending upon you know the value of omega n and tr it might look like something like this or it might also look like something like this and in many cases you know this is not actually desirable because i want to take the system statically without creating much vibration and if i get something like you know the, this curve here then it is not desirable so for those kind of system okay we have to apply or we have to increase the value of tr okay increase the value of tr so that this actually reduces so when you increase the value of tr it becomes closer and closer to the static solution okay all right we are going to conclude here in the next class we will see okay to this ramp loading after we consider this phase as well how do we get the total response and we'll do that for damped system as well as undamped system okay all right thank you